What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going to be discussing how good is Dan Bilzerian actually at poker. But before we jump into that, I want to talk about Dan Bilzerian for a moment. For those of you who don't know who Dan is, you must not be on Instagram because he's known for posting pictures of him and girls and guns and money and all kinds of things that- Hey guys, hey, I'm over here. Anyway, Dan's known for posting all of these kinds of pictures across his social media platforms and has built quite the following for it. He also claims to have made all of his money from poker, yet his dad, who had a lot of money from corporate raiding in the 80s, went to jail and was forced to pay a something to the tune of 50 or 60 million dollar fine, of which he ended up paying only a few million. So the money's missing and we just don't know where it went. Dan, however, sticks to the story he made all of his money from poker. And while that seems to be very unlikely to me, we're never actually going to know for sure because he does play a lot of high stakes poker and probably has won a lot of money there as well. Now, one thing that we didn't know was how good is Dan Bilzerian actually at poker? And that's something that we're going to get to find out here today. Now, the entire session was streamed live on Twitch, and we're going to check out some hands. There's a few absolutely outstanding hands, but before we talk about that, I want to quickly talk about my Twitch streaming because a lot of people have been bringing it up to me, asking me when I'm going to stream again, and I am going to stream this Friday at 8 p.m. Central at 11 a.m. PST. Head over to DougPolk.tv and follow the channel, and make sure to click that notification button so that you get a notification for when I go live. All right, on that note, let's jump into some Dan Bilzerian poker. This session does kick off with some super casual multi-accounting, with Dan Bilzerian jumping onto Bill Perkins' account to play the sesh. Don't do this, guys. Make sure to play on your own account because you can definitely get banned. And while I'm sure these guys could give one fuck less, protect your account. So first hand, right out of the gate, Bilzerian decides to 3-bet with Queen-10 off. Definitely want to try and avoid this play in general because when you get 4-bet, you have a bad situation. And also, if you call, you get a profitable flat and get to play some post-flop. Post-flop in this hand is also a little sketchy. I mean, I don't totally hate the line, but when you jam the river, you should probably try to have a diamond in your hand, and you might want to pick a more reasonable size. However, I'm generally okay with this decision. He has a Logan jack or a so six, and he's no thinking about it. No fucking way, bro. He's considering an ace high call right now. He, no, he thinks he's he in the flush. 80 second tank. This guy's so brutal. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Just waiting for the fucking time delay to fucking catch up. He's trying to catch up to see if he can see He's watching hand. the last five minutes to fucking determine the updated stats <laughs> on his poker tracker. <laughs> He's going to the five minute time bank. Oh, we got him to lay it down. Fold and show. Fold and show. No, 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 no. We... I don't really not call. I think that's not a bad spot to fucking blast him. You bet this again or check it? Probably check. I think I could shift this. What's going on over here? All in. Have you got all in again? No. <laughs> oh my god. You just cannot help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to worry about a three or a seven, so you might get a little bit more fold. That's what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. I got his ass. If you decide to flat jack eight off facing a three bet and bet on six, five, four when check two, you absolutely have to run it on a turn nine. You have some straights, some sets, some two pairs. And additionally, if you had a straight draw like nine, eight or nine, seven, you've paired up. So really you don't have that many hands that might want to bluff and jack eight is certainly one of the ones you want to go for it. Also, Bill Perkins, uh... He's got to worry about a 3 or a 7, so you might get a little bit more full. 3 or a 7. 3 or a 7. You might want to check this board again. Actually, let's pull up the hand rankings. The way that a straight works is it has to be five... Do we have to do this again? No? Okay, let's move on. He could have 9, 10, and get a lot of shit. Or he could just have an 8. Ugh. Do not call that. What? He has a king or an 8. Are you guys fucking... Okay, I'll tell you what. It's $1,000. I'll bet you $5,000 that he has a king or an eight. Really? Oh yes. I, you can call. Wow. I'm willing to bet it. You want to bet five grand he has a king or an eight? Okay. Yes! Right. Oh, man. No, he, he can't, right? There's... 
There's no way. All right, all right. So we got five grand. You five, say five grand. Hey. King or eight? Five thousand. How Ready does go. he know? All right, fuck it. God dang it, motherfucker. Ship the cheese! Sher ship the <laughs> sherbet, kid! I mean, I mean, Too late I now, you're know. dead. You're fuck. Fuck. I don't know. Yeah, you he's fucking lost. Keep going. Yeah. Why not? Why wouldn't we keep going? You lose. Yeah. Told you, you lose. Like, oh my god. I don't know. You? What's wrong with you guys? I didn't realize sex and whiskey in Australia had so much in common. Neither one of them's putting up with Dan and shit. I was reading on those, uh, those... <laughs> Oh my god, Dan uh... just dropped it. I can't even talk. That seems down. like the ideal flop. This was one of the bigger hands of the entire match with Dan flopping a flush over Sex and Whiskey's lower flush. And really it was pretty standard by both players. At the end of the hand, Dan makes a comment that how is he not ship it on the turn? But in reality, calling with your low flushes there could be totally fine. Now, raising on the flop or turn with low flushes does have some merit. You can get some value from some over pairs or top pairs or, or sets if they do have a hand like a set that's gonna be kind of rare. But the problem with raising there is if your opponent's bluffing, you, you let them fold. And really, if he's been watching how Dan's playing this match, letting Dan have a chance to hang the noose, not such a bad play. So I really don't mind that. However, from Dan's side, also a very standard hand, flopping a flush, going three streets. You could consider maybe going for a trap at some point, but when you have this aggressive image and you've been bluffing a lot, I like his play. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. We're talking current though. Yeah, see, 50 yards to win. Oh, jeez. Okay, don't look. Because if they, maybe someone's on a faster stream or something like, you know. Should I, uh... You raise or fold. You're not calling. No. Oh god, this 3 bet size on the flop. Dan's doing the money we did to this Ford Explorer a year ago. Like, Keaton's a fan of that. Wow. <laughs> you, you have no... Oh, wow. 24? I don't know why you're betting, but go ahead. Yes. It's great. We're gonna lose, we're gonna lose this pot. And $50,000 is getting vaporized right out the window. You, you, you. Now you have to jam. He can't jam. He's now has he to. He, he's going to lose. It's like he's got two thousand. Probably he's gonna lose for sure, but it's cheap. He's not folding anything. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Thank you. You know, when his opponent calls the flop three bet and then the turn, by the river, you have to feel like you're beat. I mean, what hand does he even have that can call you like this? On that route, the flush gets in. I mean, what what is he going to fold? He's never folding an ace the way that you're playing. I just don't think that this was a very good play. Wow. They had the interception. They would have had the ball in the last possession. Now the Green Bay is in field goal position. That is of significance. That is so bullshit. Was it a bullshit ball or no? Wow, look at this. He led into me. Wait, it was like an uncatchable ball too, right? Like the guy, there's like no way the guy Yeah, that's what I figured he had. Three. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> Got him. Oh. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> when you have 7-5 off and open the button and heads up and you get 3 bet, in general you want to fold. This hand's just a little bit too weak to want to see a flop. Maybe there was more like 9-8 off or even 8-7 off, you could think about it. But 7-5 off is just too bad of a hand. And this isn't, isn't exactly a small 3 bet sizing either, so you gotta let it go. If you do call when you flop top pair, you want to slow play. You want to go for the call here on the flop, let your opponent maybe bluff, and then that way if he has a hand like over cards or a straight draw, you have a chance of him bluffing it off and you calling him down. If you raise any jams, yeah, maybe he'll have a flush draw from time to time, but you're flipping against a hand like that. And if he has an over pair, he has you crushed. So this doesn't really make that much sense, especially when you're 200 blinds deep. This is a very easy flop call. <laughs> What, is, what does that supposed to mean? Please explain yourself. 
your like your feelings, your impulses <laughs> reflected <laughs> through your <laughs> play. Uh, oh god, this, that's why, not the Why do aces have to get turned into a, like a straight? You know? Yeah. Why can't they just be aces? What's up with that? Oh, brutal. That is brutal. While an ace on this board is quite strong, it's way too thin to try and go three streets. You lose to a six, you lose to boats, and even if he calls you with an ace, it's just a chop, I don't really see what he's going for. This value bet is way too thin, so I'm going to rate it Tom Dwan on Poker After Dark. <laughs> Fucking Perkins and his oh. numbers. You think? I think T60 is more appropriate. You can call them all in, but... There we go. Let's yeah, get some flips it. back to normal. Oh, God. All you need is a six. Yeah. If, oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> that's how we want to win these hands. That's the kind of shit that we want to see. Oh, man. Gets it in with sixes and sucks out on jacks. Some people just have all the luck. Actually, no, wait. He really, he really does have all the luck. Give him a flag for not catching that. <laughs> Should I start pop? Just ship it. You think? Yeah, just do it. Mm. Why do you like that? Just to discourage him from doing it? Just pisses people off, and like if they have a better pair, like. Just jamming your low pocket pairs pre-flop hasn't been a thing since 2008, so I'm gonna have to give this one a rating of Isaac Haxton playing a tournament. It's an experience. Are you flying commercial, Perkins? I'm flying private to San Fran and then commercial to Singapore. Times are tough for Perkins. <laughs> what a dream. 12. Fuck. You think he has a straight? No. Six. What are you what are you doing here? I go all in, but I'm psycho, and you're probably getting called. <laughs> oh Bill! Oh Bill! <laughs> <laughs> I wanna feel I wanna feel the tension in your arms. I just wanna see what happens here in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is one where we just had to do it. Oh yes, yeah. and we showed it to him Bill's too. Those are lies. Show cards. Those are lies. <laughs> and he showed the cards. <laughs> <laughs> this hand with nine eight is totally ridiculous. It shouldn't have gotten three bet pre. It shouldn't have gotten three bet in the flop. Absolutely crazy hand, but it does manage to get through. So I'm gonna rate this one Phil Ivy against Paul Jackson. Barry, let's put this in perspective. We're looking at a million chip pot, and both players have nothing. All in. What? The last hand we're going to look at is, I believe, to be the biggest pot of the entire session. So we're going to give a little more in-depth analysis. The pot opens with Dan Bilzerian coming in for a raise with Queen Jack suited, getting three bet, and deciding to go for a four bet. You know, especially at the more shallow stack depths, I wouldn't like this. But as you get really deep, it can be okay to mix in some suited Broadway hands like this into your four bet range because it has a lot of playability. And it's likely if your opponent can use to play, they're probably going to flat your four bet. So I'm not a huge fan of this. I'd probably lean towards flat, but it can be okay to work this into your game. The flop comes queen high and the action checks to him. And at this point, I wouldn't mind seeing a check back. I know that seems very conservative here with top pair and betting has some merit, but you're not going to be able to go three streets. And by checking back the flop with a hand like this, you protect your range. He decides to go for the bet though, which is okay and gets a call. The turn's a queen, so he's made an extremely strong hand, but I'm not the biggest fan of the way he tries to play it from here. I think on the turn, both options of betting very small or checking it back make sense. You want to play your hand in a way that looks like you have aces so that if your opponent tries to bluff you, you're protected and can calm down. In fact, if you do bet here with aces and get raised, it is a nightmare because they can have three of a kind quite easily. So I'd prefer taking a line that would look a little bit more like aces. However, he does decide to go ahead and bet, which sets up pretty for a pretty easy river shove. 
And all in all, from here, it's obviously standard when he jams and gets called. Obviously, a situation where, you know, it's a cooler, right? Three of a kind versus a boat. Not much you can do. Although, he didn't get there on the river. All in all, while Dan did play very aggressive, I wouldn't say that he played all that great. In fact, there was some serious button clicking going on in this match. I think that maybe he could beat some high stakes, very soft live games, but on the internet, he's a fish in the water. Thank you for joining me for this video, and as always, hit that subscribe button and join the team.